In this set of podcasts, we're going to meet several objectives. We're going to introduce two sorting algorithms along with their associated problem solving strategies. The insertion sort that takes an incremental strategy and the merge sort that takes a divide and conquer strategy. We're going to illustrate how to use loop invariance to prove the correctness of one of these algorithms. And then we're going to go into quite a bit of detail on analyzing the runtime complexity of insertion sort. We're going to do this in far more detail than we really would like to do, just to motivate shortcuts uh, that algorithm analysts take in analyzing algorithms. Okay, so for the first part, let's begin with the sorting problem. Okay, to specify a problem, uh, we need, an, uh, before we can come up with a solution, we need an unambiguous specification of what is to be solved and a, a declarative specification. Uh, in other words, one that doesn't tell you how to solve it. So uh, a sorting problem can be specified this way. We have a sequence sigma of real numbers of, um, let's say, uh, x1, x2, dot, 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 xn. And the sorting problem is to output a permutation of sigma, which we'll call pi. It's just some reordering of these uh, numbers, which we might call x prime 1, x prime 2, x prime n. The prime is intended to indicate that these are not the same numbers. The x uh, indicates that they're taken from the same set, but they may be in a different order. So part of the specification of the sorting problem is that we need to output this permutation, but we also need the condition that it's sorted. So we're going to say x prime of uh, j is less than or equal to x prime of j plus 1 uh, for all j in this, this sequence of uh, j between 1 and n. A couple of observations here. We assume that n is an integer. Uh, we do not assume that the x sub i are unique. They, there may be duplicates. So how might we solve the sorting problem? Suppose you um, have a stack of papers, such as a business cards, or you're a teaching assistant, and you need to sort some exams in alphabetical order. To make the problem simpler, we'll say we have some letters represent these things you want to sort. And we're going to use something called an incremental strategy, which is to um, take off a piece of the problem at a time and one element of the problem and deal with it until you've dealt with all of the elements of the problem. So a, a simple incremental strategy here is to take this pile of things that we want to sort, and we're going to make a new pile over here that's sorted by taking items one, out of, one at a time out of the first pile and putting them in the second pile. Let's say we first knock off the first item, and the, we put it in the new sorted pile. And now we're going to deal with the second item, E, and we go into the sorted pile and we compare and right here if we compare it to the previous item it's smaller so it should go before that so what we're going to do is is uh, rewrite this item and um, erase that there and put the e here put the e there okay and then keep going okay we take the w we look right here and it turns out that the w it comes after the T, so we just have to write it in there. And then we take the B, and we look right here. And now things get a little bit complicated. Uh, it turns out that we need to move the W over because the B is going to have to go at least here. So we move the W over, switch back to the pen. And then we look at the next item. Whoops, we got to move it over too. So erase that. Put it there, and we look there, and same thing. We've got to move the E over, uh, so erase that, and put the E there, and finally we can write the B there. And then similarly with the G. We look here, okay, and now they are sorted. 
by the incremental strategy. Okay, so let's look at how what this looks like in code. So basically what it's doing is it's starting with the second element because the first element is always part of a sorted list and it's getting the key. This is the next letter to be inserted. So we started with the T already in, at the beginning of the list and then we picked off the next element which was the E and then we go down the sorted sequence to insert it in its proper position. So this I is going to start at the position before where we started and it'll see if the uh, the thing in that position is bigger than the key like for example when the when the E was bigger than the T we had to move the T over to make room for the E so here this is shifting elements up until you've got room for the, the thing you want to put in there and this just steps down one step and you keep doing that until the position you're looking at now um, is available and you write it into there so that's the basic strategy, and we can look at it one more way, just for fun. Uh, there is a, some videos done in Europe using folk dances. Here is the, the sort. There's a little bit of music playing here. Maybe I'll turn that down a bit. Here's all the numbers. Remember, the first element here is always already in sorted order. The second element is compared to the first element to see do we need to shift you down. So right now we're just dealing with this part of the array. Clap means we've hit the end of the list. Here she is comparing herself, saying I've got to swap. Compare. We're good. Okay. Here's a case where no swap is needed. And here's a case where a swap is needed. And here is a case, well, they check first. And of course, this one's going to have to go down several steps. So as you can see, we start to deal with, it's incremental because we pick off new elements of the, of the uh, unsorted data, inserting it into the sorted data bit by bit. Okay, that is the end of this podcast. And in the next one, in part B, we will look at loop invariance to show the correctness of the insertion sort algorithm.